and a good afternoon to you. So I would, thought I would take us into a conversation, perhaps a little meditation practice today that focuses on equanimity. Equanimity, if we put it into other terms, would mean composure, it would mean stability, it would mean calm, particularly in the face of tension, uh, trying circumstances. So I feel like this is a lovely place for us to recognize that we can cultivate this stability, this composure in the face of ever-changing and sometimes trying circumstances as much as we can cultivate a sense of compassion and of wisdom, because they're really all kind of wonderfully brought together in a way that brings a sense, I think, of skillful maneuvering through our lives, awareness of what we can and cannot control. And that's really the key, is that when we allow ourselves to be with certain concepts, right, and the way that we can impact and not affect, it takes some of the pressure off of ourselves and the shoulds and some of those things that distress us and cause us distress can wipe, can just ease away just a little bit and not contribute to us feeling so upset and uncomfortable. So let's talk about this. And Equanimity is really, um, when, as a practice, it's the opportunity to create a spaciousness and a balance of your heart, of your compassionate giving and being, and of wise mind. And when we bring this to our world, it really is a matter then of creating a balance of self-care and perspective as we also do our best to show up in a way that is meaningful and in alignment with us. So there's a well-known serenity prayer, and I'm, I'm sure most of us are familiar with it, but think of it in this lens of our conversation. May I have the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So you may have heard those words many a time, but when you think of them in the container of equanimity, there's a lot there. So wisdom recognizes that all beings are the heir to their own actions, to their own karma, if you will. So the beings do, and the result of those actions come to roost, <laughs> as they say. So we may wish for happiness and peace for all beings around us. But when it comes to humans, we can wish those things for them, but it is really in their control to make them manifest. So to cultivate equanimity, I think that maybe we can just take a little bit of time, if you will, if you're in a space where you wanna close your eyes or just lower your eye gaze with me and just listen to me. Otherwise, you can just continue to watch me as we talk. So as we cultivate equanimity, when we sit in a comfortable posture, regardless of whether our eyes are closed or not, you might even be driving, you might be taking a walk as you listen, but just be present. And we're just gonna bring a soft attention to our breath, to our physical body. It's bringing a centeredness of mind to this conversation and benefit from the feeling of knowing the spaciousness and the balance that can come with equanimity as our focus of practice. Sense what a gift it could be to bring a peaceful heart to the world around you. Let yourself feel an inner sense of equilibrium and of composure. And then perhaps we can start utilizing phrases to bring a greater wish for the circumstances and the beings around us. But first, wishing ourselves, may I be balanced and at peace. May I be balanced 
and at peace. Acknowledging that all circumstances, all things that have been created will arise and fall away. Joys, sorrows, pleasant sensations, distressing circumstances, states of mind, states of being. They will rise, they will fall, civilizations, political systems. They will rise, they will fall. And maybe we can then expand this sense of equanimity and composure to include, may I learn to see the arising and passing of all nature with equanimity and balance. May I be open and balanced and peaceful. And again, acknowledging that for all beings, they are the heirs to their own actions. And very importantly, we can love and care and demonstrate compassion for others. We cannot fix them nor love for them. With others, we might want to add the phrase your happiness and suffering depend on your thoughts and actions and not my wishes for you. Hear this phrase, this is an important phrase. Your happiness and suffering depend on your thoughts and actions, not my wishes for you. And maybe we can take this practice even a little bit closer to our community, to specific people, people that we care about or that we are finding ourselves in resistance with or struggling with. And maybe we can add these phrases. May you learn to see the arising and passing of all things with equanimity and balance. May you be balanced and peaceful May you live with a peaceful heart. May you know happiness and less suffering. As we consider the world at large, we broaden our circle of caring with a spacious heart and a knowing that we can hold all of that when we stay present to our balance and our capacity to offer compassion and wishes of peace without a false concept of being able to fix. That we do not necessarily have the responsibility of making others happy. That's theirs. So Maybe we can widen this out even further with our circle of caring. May I bring compassion and equanimity to the events of the world. Others' happiness and suffering depends on their thoughts and actions and not my wishes for them. May I learn to see the arising and passing of all things with equanimity and balance. May I live with a peaceful heart. The very wise Thich Nhat Hanh, who just passed away recently, shared, the best way to take care of the future is to take care of the present moment. In this present moment, and then this one, start by taking care of you and your compassionate heart, widening your circle of care, because you can hold it all when we find that space of equilibrium, composure, equanimity, and it takes practice to shift into this space. Hmm. With that, I wish you equanimity, balance, and peace. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for your attention.